Welcome back, and today we're looking at systems analysis and design, user interface design. And so let's talk about the process of designing screens, forms, and reports. And this is a really user-focused activity. So as we think about our group projects here, and we're working on an app, um, it's possible to this day that you've really focused just in your teams of two, three, or four members on what needs to get done. This is the time now when you're gonna to have to involve your friends and your family and ask them some questions about the app and maybe even put what you've got in their hands so they can give you some feedback as a user of your application. So this is a user focus activity. It follows a prototyping approach, which means we build something quickly, show it to the user, listen to what they have to say, make changes, make the changes, give it back to the user, get some feedback, and that's an iterative process. So there are five things we need to focus. Who, what, when, where, and how. Who, what, when, where, and how. Who will use the screen for more report? What is its purpose? When will it be used? Where does the screen for more report need to be delivered and used? And then how many people need to use or view this particular screen? So those are the who, what, when, where, and how questions you need to get answered. And so uh, the design specs are a major deliverable from this process that we're doing here. And so, and, and the design specs can contain three major components. One is a narrative, so a written description of what's going on, pretty much covering the who, what, when, where, and how. And then there's actually the screen form and report and designs. So that's the second part. And then third is testing and usability assessment. So narrative, the actual design of the screen form or report, and then testing, usability, and assessment. So as with pretty much everything else that we've covered in systems analysis and design here, there is also a process for designing screens, reports, and forms. And it's a six part process. So we're gonna go through those six parts right now, uh, work through each one of them. Um, but let me first, you know, kind of give you a headline of what these six parts are. And they are layout of the screen. Then there's content awareness, how well the user actually understands the information contained on your screen for more report. The aesthetics, how does it appeal to the user? The user experience, is it easy to use? Consistency, um, obviously that means things looking the same as you go through them. And then minimal user effort, can the task be accomplished quickly? So let's go to the first one of the six, layout of the screen. And obviously layout is about laying things out. But there are different ways you can do things. Um, like items can be grouped into areas. Areas can be subdivided. But the whole deal here is that there should be a natural intuitive flow. Uh, so users from Western nations tend to read top, um, well, they read left to right, top to bottom, but other users from other regions, particularly Asian regions, read uh, right to left. And this is something you need to consider when you're uh, building your layout. So here's a picture of a general layout, and a lot of this you'll be intuitively aware of, but you may not know what's been going on. So the general layout here is at the top you have navigation, in the middle, you have your forms and reports, and at the bottom, you have your status area. And you've seen this a million times, but now you actually know what those three, what's been going on with these screens that you've been uh, looking at. There's actually been some thought and process behind it. Second uh, part that we of the six that we'll look at is content awareness. And that applies to the interface in general, to each screen and to each area on the screen. Got to think about titles. You need a title for all interfaces. Menu should show where a user is, how they got there, and how to get back from where they are. And all, all areas should be well defined, logically grouped together, and easy to pick between what's going on. And so that's the content awareness section. So the third of the six areas that we're going to look at is aesthetics. And the interfaces should be functional, inviting to use, and pleasing to the eye. And often minimalistic design helps. 
Uh, white space can be used to provide separation. And you've got to really think about how dense information is going to be when you present it to your user. Um, and so novices prefer, prefer lower density of information. Experts prefer higher density. And I think for most of the applications you're designing, it's going to be for novice users. So basically, you can't put too much on a screen. Then you need to think about text, the actual font type, use of characters, whether you underline or bold something. And you've got to look at colors and patterns. Um, and so red on blue in this slide, it's really hard to read. So let me show you a high density example. Here it is, a lot of information. But you can imagine if you're an expert user, you know exactly what's on this screen. You don't have to read all the pieces. You know where the data goes and which data you need. And so that kind of makes sense uh, for really high-end users that you can have high density examples, uh, high density when you come to the aesthetic layouts of your screens. All right, we're on to the fourth area that we're covering, and it's consistency. And as you can imagine, consistency means that uh, when you move between screens and even within a screen, you keep things the same so people can understand what's going on. Extremely important concept in making the system simple. It allows you to track through what's going on. Key areas of consistency are the navigation controls and terminology. The way you describe things needs to be consistent as well. The fifth thing that we're going to look at is providing our users um, a design that requires minimal user effort. So interfaces should be designed to accomplish things quickly. And a common rule is the three clicks rule. You should be able to go from the main menu to pretty much anything you need in three clicks. And if that's not the case, you've not done your minimal user effort design very well. All right. so. This slide right here shows the user interface design process. Five steps, and it's an iterative, and you may go backwards and forwards through these things. So right up at the top, we have the use scenario development. And we've kind of already figured out our use cases, so this is excellent. So we know the different ways our system's gonna be used. Then we move from there onto the interface design. And then we have uh, the standards design, as in what standards, what font we're going to use, what colors we're going to use, things like that. Then we build a prototype, and then we show it to users. And then we probably skip past use and scenario development. But you never know. It might be once we talk to a user, they're like, uh, you forgot this piece, or oh, no, 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 here's how I would use this. And then that obviously leads us back through this five-step process of how to build a user interface. So let's talk a little bit about the five areas of this user interface design process. And the first is that use scenario development. And a use scenario outlines the steps for performed by users to accomplish some part of their work. This is kind of like our use case uh, diagrams and use cases that we had. A use scenario is one path through an essential use case presented in simple narrative description and the document Doc, you, what you do is you document the most common cases, so interface designs will be easy to use for each situation. So there you go. You should be able to take your use case diagrams, your use cases, and your use case narratives for that matter, and you, you should be able to put through a use scenario um, to describe how a user would use your system now that you've built it. Second part of the five-part process to designing a screen, a form, or a report is the interface structure design. And a lot of this is just the basic components of how you get things done. Kind of the basic components of buttons, uh, headings, and things like that. And there is actually, if, as you would imagine, there's a standard for everything. And we've been uni using unified modeling language a lot. But here we have Windows navigation diagrams, so kind of how we build out um, well, it's one way, of course, that you can build things out is to use Windows navigation diagrams. And what they do is they kind of show the relationship between all the screens, forms, and reports, show how you move between them. Boxes represent components. Arrows represent transitions. Um, and that kind of makes sense. It's almost like you could take screenshots of what you've built already, and then you could show the relationship between the screens using screenshots. 
And so that's Windows Navigation Diagrams. And like a, um, basically, as it says on this slide, they're like a class diagram for the user interface. Boxes represent the components, the window, the form, the report, the button, and arrows represent how you get between stuff. Now, what I've got here for you is a sample Windows navigation diagram showing right there in the middle, the big box is the client menu. And then when you click add client, it goes down to the add client form. And that's off to the right there. When you click find client, it goes to the find client form. And from the find client, there's a couple of ways that you can do your search from there. So as you can see, this is a Windows navigation diagram. It looks a lot like a class diagram. And what it's doing is showing how your menus, how your buttons go together. And that's just a really nice way to lay things out. And it's definitely one of the things that we're going to need from you in your final report. We need to consider how we're going to get data into our application. And that needs to be structured. And so there's a way of thinking about how to structure data entry. And so here you go, there's what, six, seven things here. So entry, never require data that are already online or that can be computed. Don't you just hate it when you're online and you have to put something in? One of the things that really bugs me is that I'm asked for my zip code and then my state and city. Well, from a zip code, you can look up state and city. So you should never have to put more than a zip code in if you ask me. Defaults, I always pride a default value in appropriate. Uh, units, make sure that it's clear, centigrade or Fahrenheit, uh, millimeters or centimeters or inches. Um, replacement, use character replacement when appropriate. This is a big issue when you're doing uh, telephone numbers and social security numbers. Um, so for a telephone number, some people use parentheses around the area code. Some people use dashes between. Um, really, you should allow a user to put whatever format they want. And then you take out the brackets, the dashes, the spaces, and just make it a 10-digit, um, 11-digit uh, number, whatever it is, um, to make it a proper phone number. Captioning. Always pr put a good caption in place. Always pr provide formatting examples. So for social, three, two, four, and you can give an example. Uh, justify entries, left, right, center, whichever makes most sense and provide context sensitive help where it is needed. So a really important thing for your user interface, for your buttons, forms, and reports is to control the way users get data into your application. And so uh, the, the huge issue behind this, of course, is as you can imagine, is to reduce errors and improve the accuracy of things. So your job as a systems analyst is to anticipate user errors and as part of the process of building things is to design the system to stop those from happening. And so we've got a um, couple of examples here of how to do that. So the types of data errors are on this slide. There are append, truncate, transcription, and transposition errors. So appending is where you accidentally add an extra character. Truncation is where you lose a character. Uh, transcription is where you flip something. Uh, no, that's transposing, sorry. Transcription is where you enter invalid data. Um, and then transposing, that's where you flip. Uh, so 19 becomes 91, that's a transposition error. And then this slide here shows the techniques used by systems designers to detect errors. Um, and I really, I'm gonna leave this to you. You can pause this, I'm not gonna walk through this. Um, but I would suggest you pause the video uh, and take a look through these validation tests and why you would do them. This is a really nice slide, um, which goes through some really nice validation tests. So pause this, look at this slide, and then when you've finished, move on. So the final part of user interface design is to evaluate it. And basically the whole point here is to improve the interface design before the system is complete. You want to get as many people to look at this as possible. Um, basically, anyone who might use your system should have a chance to have a look at it. And really, that's what you need to be doing with your application that you're building as a group. Hand it off to someone. And what I like to do when I'm doing this is I hand it to them, and you need to give a little bit of context. Um, 
but that's all you should do. Just give some context, hand them the phone with the app on it or whatever the device is with the app on it, and then just watch. Watch what they do, which buttons they press, what they do next. Um, it might show you that your buttons are in the wrong order. It, the, have them talk out loud as well. Have your users talk out loud, not ask you questions, although they can, I guess, but just have them talk out loud. So what I'm doing first is I'm opening the app. Now the app's open. Oh, that's a nice color. Um, I see three buttons. I'm going to press the top one because it looks like the first one I should press. Just have them walk through the process. So there you go. That is systems analysis and design, user interface design.